So something that the gaming world seems to have taken quite an interest in recently, and also something that I myself have uh, been finding quite interesting recently, is the use of procedural generation and level design. Specifically seed-based procedural generation and level design. If you're not familiar with that concept, just think of a game like Minecraft or The Binding of Isaac or something, where the game asks the user to enter a random word or sentence or number or whatever, and from there it uses that to create the level so that it gives the appearance of being completely random. But say you find yourself in a world that you really happen to like, well, from there you can take the seed you used to generate the level and send it to your friends, and they can also have fun in that world. So a few months ago I started thinking about how exactly this would be done in something like Game Maker, and uh, I came up with this. To demonstrate, I'm going to restart the room, I'm going to enter a seed of, I don't know, potato, and it's going to give me something completely random, and I'm going to keep doing that, and it's uh, still completely random, but if I were to enter the same thing over and over again, it's going to give me the same result. And that's exactly what we want to happen. So I'm going to close out of this example, and I'm going to come over here, to my main uh, project over here, and I'm gonna run it. And this is pretty much empty except for a little bit of setup. I have myself a grid. I want that to be a 64 by 64 and not 32 by 32. So I'm just going to change that number there and that number there. Okay. Uh, we have a solid object object which doesn't do anything right now. Actually, it will. It's going to uh, scale itself by two. There, guys. So things are going to be a little bit bigger, easier to see. And the main runner type object. Um, there's just the draw event which draws the grid, there's the escape key which ends the game, and there's a space bar which restarts it. Uh, nothing happens, at least not yet. First, I'm going to go into the create event. By the way, if I sound like there's like a boulder stuck up my nose, there kind of is. It's allergy season, and there's not much I can do about that for the next like three months. So I'm just going to be sounding different for a little while. Anyway, I'm going to go into the create event. I'm going to go and uh, open up my notes on this other screen over here. Ignore that. I'm going to make myself some variables, and I'm going to say, uh, how about uh, rx equals room, I'm not even, rx equals room with an integer division of 64, and uh, ry is going to be the same thing for the height, and this is going to represent the cells in the grid, the, uh, the little grid that shows up on the over the ground when you're in the game, this one here. And next, let's see, I'm going to assign, uh, I'm just going to keep track of how many cells are empty and how many are full. So I'm going to say cells equals uh, rx times ry. I'm going to say units. This is going to be how many uh, cells in the room are filled up with objects. I'm going to talk about this more later. Equals zero. Next, I'm going to say seed equals, let's see, get string. And I'm going to ask the user for a seed. Um, any random uh, string of characters, any random word, numbers, doesn't really matter. I'm going with, I could make this just a number, but um, typically when you enter words for your seeds in games, they're a little easier to remember. But that's going to happen. I'm going to get a seed from the user. Next, I'm going to say grid equals ds grid create uh, with the size of rx by ry. This stuff here is really optional, but I'm just going to set um, the entire grid to, what is it, set region, yeah, there we go, grid 0, 0, rx, ry. I'm going to set the entire uh, grid to um, no one, so null, and apparently I'm missing like a, a comma somewhere. Oh, I swear, I always do that, I always like skip a uh, comma or something. By the way, why is there like not line numbers showing up in this code window here? I would like to fix that. Ah, oh, there we go. So now, um, <clears throat> the line numbers are going to show up and it's going to be a little more helpful. After this, I'm going to say, uh, I'm just going to make up a script, generate, gen, n has an n in it, create, map, and it's going to take the seed. And it doesn't exist yet, it's going to in a minute, so I'm going to come over here and make myself a script. I'm going to call it that. I'm going to, uh, can you go away? Oh, okay. I thought I misspelled it for a moment. I'm going to leave this open for now. I'm going to write myself a little uh, signature over here. So I'm going to say it's going to be void because it doesn't return anything. And it takes one argument, which is a seed. Um, let's see, the first thing that I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to turn this into a number because numbers are typically easier to uh, do math on than letters and words and stuff. 
So I'm going to say uh, var p equals 0 and uh, I don't want a second <clears throat> i equals 0. And I'm just going to go in this case in the for loop equals 1. i is less than or equal to string length. In this case, I'm just going to go through a simple for loop through every letter in the string and add up uh, the total of the ASCII character values. You know, like capital A is 65, capital B is 66, lowercase a is 96, lowercase b is 97. And I'm just going to get a number by adding all those up. This is just an arbitrary like math function here. It doesn't really matter what that looks like. You can make it whatever math you want to turn this into a, uh, a number. You can make it however crazy or simple you want it to be. Here. And it's been a little while since I've actually run the game, hasn't it? But here I'm going to go and uh, set up a few more local variables. So I'm going to say, how about x, x, uh, y, y, my usual temporary position variables. That's it for now. Here, I'm going to, uh, to start out with, I'm only going to go and create 10 objects in the room. I'm not going to go do the entire full crazy, like, script you see over here, my uh, notes window, all at once. Uh, first, I'm just going to create 10 solid objects, fancy uh, things. So I'm going to say xx equals floor, and bear with me here. How about p uh, squared divided by 1337? If you don't know what that is, well, I suggest you find out what that is. And to keep it within the confines of the grid, I'm going to say uh, mod rx. y is going to be uh, similar. Except that's going to be instead of divided by 1337, how about 501? And it's going to be uh, our y instead of our x. Now, once again, these two uh, lines of code here, these two statements, it doesn't matter what they really are. This is just taking the seed, the number of seed, and doing the randomest math I could think of off the top of my head on it without actually using the random functions. That's the one rule of procedural generation. You can't use, say, something like random. Um, you can't use one of those or random range or i random or whatever uh, for an integer. You can't use one of those. You can't use a variable that's going to be different between runs of the game for different people. You can't use something like current second because it's highly unlikely that two times that the user runs the game, the current second value is going to be the same. And that's going to completely kill the point of letting the user intercede in the first place. If you really wanted to, you could say uh, random set seed, and you could put like a, what's the seed, p in there, and use that as the uh, random seed, and then after this, every time you um you do use one of the like random functions, uh, you get the same sequence of numbers, but even that I don't really like because that counts on GameMaker keeping the random function the same in every single update, which... They might, but it's not guaranteed that they'll do, and besides, it's honestly more fun to do it yourself anyway. Maybe that's just me. Anyway, now that I have this, um, temporary x and y positions where things are going to be created, I'm going to say instance create uh, at these coordinates. I'm going to say a solid object, and let's see, I'm going to multiply this by 64 because that's the size of the cells in the grid. The reason that I'm bothering to use these uh, temporary position variables in the first place are because I'm going to want to eventually use them more later, after the object has been created later on in this uh, video example. So I'm going to run the game, and I'm going to enter the seed <coughs> of potato, and it's created one object, which is not really what we want to do. Enter, I'm going to enter another seed. Uh, you can see I'm entering the same thing over and over again, and it's a uh, doing what you would expect it to, except it's also only ever creating a single object. Apparently. So it's actually creating 10 objects, because I did put this in a repeat loop for 10 times. But what's happening is, and probably a lot of people watching this by now have started to figure out, notice what's going on here. This random seed here is not updating between uh, runs of the loop, so it's creating 10 objects in the exact same position, which isn't what we want. So we're also going to want a way to... Uh, update the seed every time it goes and uh, creates an object. So I'm going to say, once again, you could use pretty much any math you want here as long as it doesn't contain one of the actual random functions or something like that. I'm going to say p equals, I don't know. I'm going to in increment it and then add it to like, I don't know. I'm just going to increment it for now, yeah. So now I'm going to run the game and I'm going to enter potato and it's created 10 objects and uh, it's um. 
it's creating them here. Let's see. Yeah, there's that. There, you can see some pattern to it, and that's because the uh, the math over in here isn't completely like off the wall random. You could make them a lot more complicated, and the way the room generates would turn out to be uh, closer and closer to truly random. The more complicated you make this, it's never really going to be completely random because that's kind of against the nature of computers because they like to do the same thing exactly the same way every time. But you can get pretty close. You can get close enough to fool a human. Most of them anyway. Anyway, so now that this is out of the way, I'm going to do a few more things. If you really just wanted to have something functional, you could take this example and say you're finished right now and it would really be perfectly fine. But there is more that you could do fairly simply, so I'm going to keep going with this for a little while first. I did create the grid over here in this line for a reason, and now I'm going to go and use that. So I'm going to say, let's see, grid, and use the fancy axis or notation because uh, typing. But I'm going to put this object in the grid at this position, and now uh, you can start to see why I was using xx and yy instead of just um, directly creating the object at these positions. Next, because I don't necessarily want anything to spawn on top of itself, I'm going to say if, let's see, if there is an object at the position in the grid already. So if uh, this is not equal to no one, because that's what it defaults to, then that means that there's an object there. And instead of um, doing this, we're going to continue. And I don't think I've talked about the continue statement before in uh, loops. It's not the most useful control flow statement ever. But what it does is it just skips anything else that happens to be uh, down in the body of whatever loop, whatever uh, statement you have to be in. It doesn't execute. All this down there won't be executed. If it hits the continue, it'll just um, go back to the top, the next iteration of the loop, and keep going as if it already had executed all this. So now if it uh, generates a position where there's already an object located, it's just going to not do anything. It's just going to keep going. Next, let's see, what am I going to do next? Next, I'm going to change this into a do until from repeat. Uh, let's see, that's, um, that's not how you spell until. And I'm going to do this because I do plan on having a certain ratio of the room filled up um, instead of just having a certain number of objects. So you can create a room of any size and it'll still be proportionally filled up the same thing. And that's where I'm going to enter my second argument here. <clears throat> and I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to take a decimal and it's going to be ratio. And this is going to be uh, what percentage of cells I want filled up. So I'm going to say, uh, let's see, how about 0.25, so we're going to have a quarter of the total cells in the room filled up, and I'm going to say, uh, let's see, variable ratio equals argument one. Let's see. Oh, it doesn't like that for some reason. There we go. So I'm going to say until, let's see, units divided by um, cells is greater than ratio. So once again, until a uh, a certain percentage of the cells are filled up. And here, I need to actually do something with the units variable, so I'm just going to increment it when I create an instance. I could use instance count. Uh, there is, is it instance count? OK, so it's instance number. Um, and this will essentially just go and uh, count however many of the solid objects are in the room. But say you have different types of objects that you're creating and putting in the grid and what have you. And eventually, I probably will do that. You don't want to have to be. Um, adding up multiple different types of instances. So right now I'm just going to uh, track uh, that number with a units counter. So now I'm going to say, let's see, it updates the seed, it generates some positions, it checks to see if that position is already filled. Uh, if not, it creates an instance and updates the counter, and then it checks to see if uh, there's enough of the objects in the room already. That looks good. First, before I actually run the game, um, there's one more thing I'm going to do. Um, it is possible. Probably not, but it is possible, uh, depending on what function you have here in like, the update of the seed, that you'll end up with a seed that repeatedly starts mapping onto itself, like it's going to keep generating the same random numbers. It's probably not going to happen, but just to be safe, because that will make your game hang, I'm going to go and uh, keep a couple more variables. I'm going to say xx last, yy last, and this is just going to uh, let's see, default these to uh, negative 1. These are just going to, uh, I can't really talk and type at the same time. These are going to keep the previous positions that are generated. And now if um, the game generates two positions in the same place, to prevent it from keep doing that over and over infinitely, um, if that happens, let's see, 
one and or they're not an and. Uh, if xx is equal to uh, the previous x position, yy is equal to the previous y position, uh, you're also going to break out. It's also worth noting that sometimes you can get two positions to uh, generate at the same time just completely randomly, and it doesn't mean that the program's going to hang. But just to be safe, I'm going to do that. I'd much rather have a uh, fewer instances in the room than I planned on than to have uh, the game crash on the player. So I'm just going to use this here as a, uh, a failsafe. Now, that looks like about it. I'm going to run the game now, and hopefully nothing bad is going to happen. Compile faster potato. Excellent. So that looks uh, more or less random. I'm going to enter this big giant number there. It's not completely random, but it's interesting, I'll say that much. All right. So you can see it's, uh, it's doing its job, and it's not being completely random because this isn't completely random. It's just incrementing. And here I think I'm going to say, uh, like p plus equals units or something like that. So this is going to update differently every time it goes through the loop. It's still going to be the same every time, it's not pulling like a number out of thin air, but it's going to uh, it's going to have a little more variation. So now I'm going to go and go and uh, yeah, potato, and so that looks more random than it did before. Um, I meant to type something, but I kind of misspelled it. There you have it. So that does pretty much what it's supposed to. Now. I do have a second sprite here. I have a tree, uh, in addition to just the rock. And it would be nice if I could uh, take some times and generate numbers that are uh, trees, rather, instead of rocks. And I could go and create separate objects for that, but I'm just going to go and uh, change the sprite index. So I'm going to uh, make myself a little, another little temporary variable. So I'm going to call that type. And I'm going to say somewhere down here, how about, if, uh, let's see, something also completely arbitrary made up. How about a p mod 3, that should be lowercase, not capital. I'm also going to wrap that in parentheses. If that's equal to, uh, how about 1, then type equals spr rock, else type equals spr tree. And then from there, I'm going to say grid of a uh, xx and yy dot sprite index equals type. So now overall there's about a 1 in 3 chance that the objects that are created are going to be a rock and a 2 in 3 chance that they're going to be a tree. So now we're going to yeah, potato, we have ourselves some trees, uh, if we do the same seed over and over it's going to give us the same result. If we change things, if we just do some button mashing, it's going to do that. <clears throat> we're going to have a different room. I don't feel like trying to button mash for that exact same seed again so I'm not going to, but you get the idea. There's one more thing that I could think of. It's incredibly unlikely that you're going to run into this. Um, it's probably about as unlikely as you're going to get a C that keeps mapping onto itself over and over again. But if you do this enough times, if you increment P enough times, and if uh, it keeps getting bigger over and over again, it is possible that this is going to hit the limit for the size of a number in Game Maker, which is a 64-bit double precision floating point. If you have no idea what that means, that's perfectly fine. It's just a really big number. So it may be wise to just uh, do modulo this by like 100 million or something like that. So mod, uh, I don't know, 1 followed by a lot of zeros. Just so that this number doesn't get too big and break the game. It's probably not going to happen unless you have like 100,000 like runs through the loop. And if you make like really big increments every time, but nevertheless, once again, better safe than sorry. It doesn't take any extra t effort to code. So that's that. There you have it. There you have your um, pseudo-random seed-based um, maps, levels, whatever. Uh, I'm going to keep this. I'm going to put this up for download in the description of this video, as I usually do with these Game Maker videos. Also, I will be making at least one more video on this, because I do like this concept. I do think it's uh, a lot of fun to mess around with, to mess around with uh, randomly generated levels. Before I actually do that, I'll be putting a bunch of uh, like comments in there describing what it does, because this is something that probably does require at least some comments to, uh, to tell you what it does. But for now, procedural generation, uh, keep in mind that all this here, all this math that I did here, how you implement it really doesn't matter, as long as, like I've said several times now, it doesn't actually include the random functions or anything like that. So um, yeah, go, have fun, make the next Binding of Isaac, whatever. And I will see you all later.